Archaic Records. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Archaic Records here with you again. My name is Jamie, coming at you from Nashville, Tennessee. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at the newest record by one of my favorite bands of all time, the Dead Milkmen. Uh, their newest record is called the Quaker City Quiet Pills. Uh, this record came out in June, so admittedly it isn't a brand new record, uh, but this is a record. As I've been uh, sort of looking at 2023, taking inventory, making mental notes, and sort of working on my uh, top five records of the year episode, which will be coming out this Saturday, uh, I know that you are just about ready to have a heart attack. Uh, I've been going back and looking uh, at a lot of the records that have been released this year, and this is a record that I wanted to touch on. Uh, like I said, this is one of my favorite bands of all time. A band that I literally began listening to uh, back in high school. Uh, I bought my first Dead Milkman record in 1992 uh, after seeing the song uh, The Secret of Life, I believe, on MTV. Uh, and I have been a diehard, steadfast fan ever since. I would say for many, many years, this band was actually probably in my top five favorite bands of all time. I don't know that they would hold uh, such a lofty perch uh, at this point in time, uh, but this is a band I still love. I still listen to all the time. Uh, I think this is a band that is responsible for uh, recording some of the most classic albums uh, in that sort of early to mid 80s uh, time frame. I think at their best, they are one of the greatest uh, American punk rock bands of all time. All that being said, I have to be honest with you and tell you that this year's record, Quiet City Quaker Pills, left me, at least, feeling a little bit flat. Not that it was overly surprising. I mean, to me, the band's last full-length record, uh, which came out in 2014, Pretty Music for Pretty People, was no cupcake either. Uh, in fact, I would make the argument uh, that Pretty Music for Pretty People is easily the band's weakest Released to date. Uh, the record that they had put out before that, 2011, The King is Yellow, uh, which was their uh, you know, first record after almost a 20-year hiatus, I thought, was, I thought it was decent. Uh, I don't think the band has put out a classic album uh, since 1995's Stoney, The Extra Style Pig. Uh, all that being said, I do think that Quaker City Quiet Pills uh, is better than the last one, Pretty Music for Pretty People. Uh, but still not really up to uh, the standard that you would expect from a band that can be as great as the Dead Milkmen can be. Uh, there are elements of this record uh, that I do like. I think musically, if you're a fan of the Dead Milkmen, this album doesn't necessarily uh, disappoint. I think there are tracks on this record where they sound very classic Dead Milkmen, uh, but they also mix in some, uh, some diverse other sort of sound influences, musical influences, which I do like. Uh, to me, where this album really falls short is lyrically. I mean, there are some songs on this record uh, that I just don't get. There are some songs on this record that come across uh, as being really annoying, almost lazy in some ways. Uh, and, you know, I guess, I guess in a way, you could sort of take that as a backhanded compliment. I think when a band is as great as the Dead Milkmen are. Uh, they are sort of working against their own legacy. Uh, and to me, this record uh, just really falls short, at least in my opinion. Like I said, I would take it over the 2014 record, uh, Pretty Music for Pretty People, but that's not really a huge compliment because I think since 2014, when Pretty Music for Pretty People came out, I've maybe listened to it, man, probably three times, honestly. That record... Uh, is a tough listen, in my opinion. Uh, I had w sort of, as excited as I, as I was when this record was announced, uh, when the first single came out, uh, Grandpa's Not a Racist, He Just Voted for One, uh, I was a little bit uh, like, uh, I don't know about this, because the record is, as I said before, there are songs on it that have a Dead Milkman sound, uh, but lyrically, uh, this song is just really... It's hard to stomach. Now, I'm not a Trump guy, just so you know, but and, you know, I respect the fact that 
The band goes after somebody that they don't like, somebody that is divisive and hateful, uh, as Trump is. But to me, this song, it really, you know, they really work hard within stereotypes. They harvest a lot of uh, low-hanging fruit, in my opinion. I think the lyrics uh, are not really all that you know, articulate, ironic coming from me. I realize that. Uh, and to me, at the, at the same time, there's almost nothing, you know, more redundant than middle-aged white guys uh, picking on middle-aged white guys. One thing I do like about the song, uh, Krampus Not a Racist, He Just Voted for One, is I do like the fact that the instrumentally the song does have a great Dead Milkman sound, a classic Dead Milkman sound. And it, one thing it reminds me of uh, is if you go back and you look at old show flyers uh, from like the 1980s, uh, of course, all those bands back in those days used to go after Ronald Reagan. You know, he'd have swastikas on his forehead. He'd have a gun, brains flying out the other side. I liked that. I liked the fact that the Dead Milkmen uh, do go after Trump. I am not a Trump guy. I'm not a Trump fan. I mean, I don't like the other guy either. I don't like any politician. Uh, but I just think that the song isn't very uh, interesting. I, like I said, I think they, you know, they work really you know, they work really strongly within stereotypes. They harvest low-hanging fruit. Uh, I just don't particularly like that song. Uh, the next song is Philadelphia Femdom, the second single off this record. I have no idea uh, what this song is about. Uh, instrumentally, again, it's good. It sounds like the Dead Milkman. I like it. Uh, Rodney Anonymous' uh, vocals and lyrics on this song are just grating. I have no idea what it's supposed to be about. I have no idea what it means. Uh, you know, I love Rodney Anonymous as both a vocalist and a singer, uh, or I should say a lyricist and a singer. Uh, but to me, uh, his performance and his lyrics on this song, on this record are just, I don't get a lot of his performance on this record. Uh, the next song after that is Musical Chairs. I actually really like this song a lot. Uh, this is a Joe Jack song. One thing I've always loved about the Dead Milkmen uh, of course, is that they alternate the two singers. Uh, I think Rodney Anonymous and Joe Jack Talcum have always been very complimentary of each other uh, because of how contrasting their styles are. And I actually really think that the Joe Jack Talcum songs on this record are easily the high point. Musical Chairs, I think, is a great song. Uh, after that, uh, they have a song called The King of Sick. Again, instrumentally, I like this song a lot, but Lyrically and vocally, I don't get it. You know, again, Rodney Anonymous is a guy who I love as, a, as both a singer and a songwriter, but I don't get his performance on this song either. Uh, again, I think that, you know, instrumentally, it's awesome. I think a lot of the instrumentation on this record is really great. Uh, after that, the next song is a song called Albert Square, another Joe Jack Talcum song, another song I love off this record. I think, again, like I said, I think this is an album where Joe Jack Talcum really shines a lot on this record. I think he makes this record as good as it is, uh, which is not necessarily one of the greatest records in their catalog. Uh, the next song after that is a song called Astral Dad. Uh, or, yeah, Astral Dad, uh, another good song. Actually, one of my favorite songs off this record, this is another Joe Jack Talcum song. Uh, kind of slow, melancholic, uh, sad. I think Joe Jack Talcum is really gifted uh, at writing sort of slow, melancholy songs. Uh, a lot of my favorite songs in the history of the Dead Milkman catalog are songs just like this one. Uh, the songs uh, where Joe Jack kind of brings the mood down. His voice, I love his voice in general, uh, but I especially love his voice on slow songs. Uh, the next song is... Uh, we have always lived in the compound. Again, musically, I like the song. I just don't like the lyrics or the vocal performance from Rodney Anonymous. I mean, I don't know uh, if he was, where, what he was thinking when he wrote some of these songs or when he performed some of these songs. Uh, the next song is We Are Clearly Not the Master Race. Uh, musically, I really... Again, I like the song. I think it's got a great message, but the lyrics to this song are almost moronic. And again, Rodney Anonymous, 
everybody. There's just, with his songwriting on this record, there is just no subtlety. There's no nuance. Everything is very stereotypical. Uh, everything is very uh, the harvesting of low-hanging fruit. Uh, and again, I love the guy. I think Rodney, Nona, uh, Rodney Anonymous is one of the smartest guys in the history of this scene as far as uh, seeing him live and his lyrics and a lot of the messaging in his songs. Uh, but he just, to me, on this record, he really swung and missed uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the next song after that, is why do we how do we even manage to exist uh this is another rodney anonymous song this one i like more than a lot of the other stuff on his song uh, but i i'm a little confused by its subject matter i mean this is just a guy who is very uh, basically walks into like a lunch counter uh, or some sort of fast food restaurant and i can't imagine rodney anonymous eating fast food but he walks into some sort of lunch counter, uh, and it's basically a tirade about the customer uh, who is ordering him, ordering in front of him. Uh, and as somebody who, in my younger years, worked in food service, uh, I can appreciate the fact that Rodney Anonymous uh, does go after people who are shitty customers uh, in restaurants and food establishments, because I have uh, done those jobs in the past. So I'm going to give him a pass on this song and say... Uh, how do we even manage to exist? Uh, at least it's funny. I guess it has some sort of a... It does have kind of a throw mat, throwback element to some of the Dead Milkmen's uh, kind of funnier stuff in the past. So I actually kind of like that song. Uh, the next song is uh, God Wrote Come Junkie. Uh, really cool musically. Uh, really weird lyrics. I think this is another... Of Rodney Anonymous's better songs, though, I don't really understand what it means, which isn't to say uh, that it isn't coherent, because I am not always the brightest bulb on the tree, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, the next song after that uh, is Hen's Teeth and Goofa Dust. Uh, I like this song a lot, actually. This song has kind of a surf, uh, Dead Kennedys element to it. This is one of the best songs on the record. I wish the band would have gone maybe a little bit, not, I won't say more in this direction uh, on the entire record because it does have kind of a Dead Kennedys uh, vibe to it. Not that it's unoriginal because it really is. Uh, I think this is one of the best songs on the record. I really like this one a lot. Uh, after that uh, is the song uh, Melt Into the Night. Probably my favorite song on the record. Uh, this has kind of a post-punk early goth type of influence, another Joe Jack Talcum song. Uh, I think that this is uh, probably the best song on the record. I think that the second half of this record, uh, just in general, it sort of pulls the front end of this record's ass out of the fire a little bit. Uh, I think the second half of this record makes the record a lot more listenable uh, than the first half. Uh, the record ends with a song called uh, New York Guide to Art. Uh, really good song. I think this is actually Rodney Anonymous's best song on the record. Uh, good lyrically, uh, good vocally, great instrumentally. Uh, probably one of the best songs on the record. Uh, I would say probably Rodney's best song on the album, if you want my honest opinion. Uh, like I said, I think the second half of this record is actually uh, quite listenable after it kind of stumbles out of the gates. Uh, this is a band... That I also love seeing live. I just saw this band again live uh, this past summer uh, out here in Cookville, Tennessee uh, at the Muddy Roots Festival. They were incredible live. I've seen the Dead Milkmen not quite 10 times. I'll just say that. But several times over the years, they are always one of the greatest uh, live bands of all time. And like I said... I'm not necessarily the hugest fan of this newest record, Quaker City Quiet Pills, uh, but I would take it every day uh, over pretty, me pretty Music for Pretty People, which, like I said, I've only listened to... I mean, I bet you anything, I haven't listened to it five times since 2014. Uh, and I've gone back and I have listened uh, to this record, Quaker City Quiet Pills, several times over the past year, trying to get... I really want it to like grow on me more because I love this band so much. And they are such a big part of my musical fandom life. I mean, for me, this band was such a huge gateway into the music I love. 
Like I said, I bought my first album of theirs in 1992. I have been a fan ever since. So if you think I'm not a true fan because I don't particularly love this album, why don't we just take it outside, friend? Uh, anyway, if I had to give this record a final grade, I would give it probably a C+. Uh, I don't think it's terrible. I think it's average. Uh, I just think for a band that is this good, working against their own legacy, uh, competing against themselves a little bit, if you will, uh, I just think it's a little bit lackluster. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't, if you are a fan. I think it definitely has some, some good elements to it. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of it for me is skippage when it comes down to it. Uh, but I do love these guys, and they were incredible uh, at the uh, Muddy Roots Music Festival this summer in Cookville, Tennessee, despite the fact that it seemed like uh, maybe they didn't want to be there when they first got there. Uh, and I went back and I rewatched their episode of Big Questions with the Dead Milkmen, which I highly recommend if you haven't watched. I love their YouTube show. Uh, big questions. I love listening to the stuff they talk about. Uh, they had their trepidations when they got to uh, Cookville, Tennessee, when it first came to the uh, when they first got to the Muddy Roots Music Festival. But their show turned out great, and I think that they, if they were being honest, I think that they probably had a good time. I think the the crowd responded well to them. Which why wouldn't they? They're great. Uh, anyway, man, thank you so much for checking out this video. This is Archaic Records. Uh, my name is Jamie, coming at you from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, be sure to go out and support your local record store. Uh, tune in every week for Morrissey Monday, my weekly celebration of all things Morrissey and the Smiths, uh, as well as other record content throughout the week. And until next time, my friends, I'll talk to you then.